Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today's video is a collection of three shorter pieces I haven't uploaded yet from 2018 and some story time. The first piece you're watching was another one of my Operation Olive Branch gifts. This paw print is colored to match the pride flag and I really like how it turned out. I had a mini heart attack near the beginning, though, when I noticed that the yellow marker was pulling red from the tape into the drawing. Note to self, always test new tapes for color bleeding before using them to mask artwork. <laughs> yeah. The second piece you'll be seeing is a blue tang fish. Uh, well, uh... A purple thing, I guess, <laughs> which was one of my Drawn to Curry's Inktober pieces for the prompt Sea Life, and also my entry for the color palette challenge over on the YouTube Helper Amino that was going on the same week. The third piece is from way back in the summer when I decide to practice my marker skills and do a fur study of a captivating cat photo I found on Pixabay. I think you'll see why I found it so fascinating near the end. Hint, color choices were made based on what was in the photo. There's nothing whimsical about my choices. <laughs> But anyway, on to story time. I figured today I would just tell you about some funny, odd, and otherwise interesting things that have happened during my many years <laughs> of university. Yes, I said many years. I studied for about a decade and don't have a whole lot to show for it because I kept changing my mind about what I wanted to do. Sometimes I was studying full-time, other times I was studying part-time and working. I have majored in engineering twice, <laughs> computer science and history, and I have minored in mathematics, English, and psychology. And since North American post-secondary schools like to make sure we come out the other end well-rounded and utterly unprepared for the world, I've also taken at least one university-level course in Fine Art, French, Anthropology, Sociology, Chemistry, Physics, Statistics, Creative Writing, and Ethics. So needless to say, that eclectic collection of studies put me in touch with a lot of very different people. During my time as a history major, I had two favorite professors in the history department who I tried to study with as much as possible. I would actually pick my schedules each semester based on being able to study with them. One of them, a Danish man whose first name is Tor, which is reason enough to call this man awesome, truly shared my love for obscure but memorable facts. Yes, by the way, I am pronouncing Tor correctly, although most of us natively English speakers butcher the name and say Thor with a TH sound. Most languages from the Nordic region don't actually have that sound. My Norwegian grandfather's middle name was Otelius, spelled similar to Othello. But uh, back to Tor, I really enjoyed his class because he shares my enthusiasm for obscure facts. His lectures were always interesting. He also embraced using all sorts of media to enhance our learning, not just textbooks. So we watched a lot of films when we studied periods that had film. We read a lot of books and papers that were available during the period we were studying. And we even listened to music. He played an Arrogant Worms song for us once when we were studying the War of 1812. And being a fan of the Arrogant Worms myself, I promptly emailed him another song of theirs that I thought he would enjoy. And to my sheer delight, he played it during class the next week. Uh, it was the song History is Made by Stupid People. Go ahead and look it up after this, you won't regret it. <laughs> But perhaps the funniest thing about studying with Tor was that in all the years I studied with him, through all the papers I wrote for him, he gave me exactly the same grade on every single one. 
93%. I asked him about it once, he had no idea. The other history professor I liked studying with was a Serbian man who grew a variety of different peppers in pots in his university office and always had stories about his pit bulls and mankun cats. <laughs> and while Tor pretty much only taught courses based around Canadian or British history, this guy taught everything. In his classes, I studied medieval Europe, 20th century Europe, Russia from 800 to 1917, and a terminally boring or required senior course called historiography. Basically, if history is the study of what happened, then historiography is the study of why we want to know. Sounds riveting, I know. <laughs> On the first day of the semester, he told us that although he promised we would all hate the course, he strongly recommended that we stayed in it. It was the only senior course specifically required for graduation regardless of the focus we chose. It hadn't been offered in five semesters, and he couldn't tell us when it would be offered again because he vowed never to teach it again after that. Then we opened up one of our three <laughs> primary textbooks for the class and were greeted with the word epistemological in the first paragraph. This made me actually laugh out loud in class because just the previous semester, my mom had encountered the word and concept of epistemology in her graduate studies and had asked me if I knew what the word meant. <laughs> if you've been around my channel for a while, you might have already heard stories about the fine arts courses I've taken. I pluralized that loosely, of course, because I dropped the second and last fine art course I ever signed up for halfway through the first lecture. The first fine art course was Introduction to Life Drawing, which did include several four-hour lecture periods that consisted entirely of drawing from live, naked models. Most people in class understood that this is something that you do in the study of art, but it's not really something you apply very literally outside the classroom. Keyword most. During one homework critique circle, when we were displaying portrait studies we did at home over the previous week, just about everyone had drawn themselves fully clothed, either in front of the mirror or from a photograph. One student drew her mother, naked, sprawled on a bed. The perspective was from the foot of the bed. I'm not sure if looking at the drawing itself was more uncomfortable, or just wrapping our minds around the fact that her mother posed for this, knowing the entire class would see it, and the daughter was okay with both drawing it and displaying it. But either way, the room was uncomfortably silent when we were supposed to be critiquing. In my second stint in engineering during an electrical theory lecture, I asked the professor to clarify something. I had been taking notes on my iPad so I didn't have any pens or paper on, out on the desk, he borrowed a sheet of paper from the student next to me and then proceeded to try to draw a diagram with the iPad's stylus. <laughs> he wouldn't let any of us interrupt him to explain why the pen wasn't working. Let me re-emphasize that this was an electronics lecture in the engineering department. A different semester during my time in engineering, my groupmates and I were stumped while assembling a robot for an end-of-semester competition project. We had questions about how the sensors we had been given worked. Two of us left the lab in search of one of our professors so that we could ask about it. We found him. We asked. We did not get anything close to a satisfactory answer. What we got was 20 minutes of trying to be polite and not fall over laughing as our professor mimed his 
incoherent explanation. Uh, yeah. Picture a middle-aged man, well over six feet tall, with very untamed beard and curly head of brown hair. Add a thick French-Canadian accent and a tenuous grasp of English grammar. Got that? Okay. Now picture him pretending to be a wall-following robot. Keep in mind that this was taking place in a busy hallway for 20 minutes. The same professor caused the entire engineering building to be evacuated the next year by dropping and breaking a propane tank, which set off alarms. I've been given some pretty strange homework assignments over the years, but the strangest was definitely from that one sociology course. I hadn't even wanted to take the subject, but I needed another humanities credit that wasn't from my major, and my boyfriend at the time needed a study buddy to get him through repeating the course with the same professor as his first attempt. The homework assignment in question was to find a copy of the movie Mean Girls and finish watching it, as we had started watching it in class but didn't have time to watch the whole thing. And that is the story of how I ended up watching my sister's VHS copy of Mean Girls with my boyfriend in 2008. One of my favorite professors of all time was one of the psychology professors I got to study with multiple semesters. He was really passionate about the field, and he had a wealth of great stories from work he had done in the past assessing dangerous offenders in the prison system. That wasn't the most interesting part of studying with him, though. See, this guy paid his way through grad school by performing as a magician. Not just any magician, though. A Vegas magician. Fun fact, if you want to perform as a magician in Vegas, at least in the 80s when he was studying, you had to sign contracts with the casinos that you would not gamble. <laughs> anyway, in order to warm up our brains and ensure that he had everyone's attention, he started almost every lecture with a magic trick. During the three years that I was minoring in psychology, I never saw him repeat a trick. You made it to the end of the video! Don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe and ring that bell. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday, and I feature artists and crafters in my end card. Use the hashtag LookJennaYT. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys!